What is up guys, in today's video we're going to introduce you to one of the most popular formations in NCAA Football 14, the 3-3-5 stack. Now, the reason that the 3-3-5 stack is so good this season is because the sa you see the difference between the 3-3-5 across and the 3-3-5 stack. 3-3-5 across is more of a, you know, a 4 2 5, something like I like to run, the 4-2-5 Oki across is basically the same thing. Uh, but from the 335, and then the three, you have the 335 bear, which you know we'll get into a little later in the season. But for now, I want to show you just a basic fundamental concept out of the 335 stack. Now, this is easy pressure. Uh, just an introduction today. We're going to get more in depth with this as the week progresses. But um, the one, the play I want to focus on today is the NCAA Blitz three, the NCAA Blitz two, and I think there should be a man version somewhere in here. Let me find it. And the NCAA Blitz. So you got a man version, and you got a cover two and cover three zone version. Now there's a lot of things to cover in this Luthi 5 guide. Now this is the basic principle. So what I want to let you guys know is you can run the same Blitz from the NCAA Blitz 3, the NCAA Blitz 2, and the NCAA Blitz man play. Now in, the man, in this man play, you can also zone that middle linebacker. Now the reason that the 335 stack, in my opinion, is one of the better defenses in the game is because it allows you to user the middle linebacker, which I, uh, you know, I, that's my personal uh, favorite thing to do. Or you can also use the deep safety, but the route allows you to already be in the middle of the field, whereas the 425 across, it's a little bit more difficult. The way I like to set up the plays, yes, the blitzes are very good, but my user player is not always in the middle of the field, so uh, that's just some. That's just a quick little note. Now let's get into this breakdown. So we're going to come out in the NCAA Blitz three first to show it to you. And snap the ball. You're going to uh, the the pre snap. You see that this is a little different than the actual uh, play call screen one it showed us. And so this is why I love this uh, this play is because it gives us the blitz angles we uh, we need for this blitz to work properly. So the main setup for this play is we're going to base a line. We're going to shift our defensive line to the right, and we're going to shift our defensive back linebackers to the left. And so you see, essentially, we create this almost like 4-4 four, four look uh, from this look and this is pretty good now the beauty of this is if we want to globally blitz our left outside linebacker it's very simple we just hit R1 and flick the left stick to the left but you see he blitzes straight down so what we want to do here is we want to stack our safeties uh, at least our left side safety on the um, left foot of that linebacker. And so you see what's going to happen here is that the snap the ball we're going to get pressure. Well, we got caught up there, but at the snap the ball, what should happen is we should get pressure. Now, I like to do this without re-blitzing the linebacker. Some people like to re-blitz the linebacker, but in my opinion, you don't have to do it for the blitz to come in, so I don't do it. And you're going to see here, we get B-gap pressure from that linebacker. Now, what if your opponent slides his line to the left? Now, this is the, this is why I feel that this is this is why people like to re-blitz the linebacker here. So you're going to see, when your opponent slides his line to the left, you see then the whole blitz, it, it gets bottled up. Yes, he, you know, in theory, he's going to come in, but it's not a very clean transition. And... Like I said, you know, slide protection is going to be something a good player will do. And you see, I mean, you see how they get caught up? Like, it's good, and you see the potential in it, but, like, it's just, it's, like, not good enough for me. Like, so, this is where I come in. So, I like to shift my defensive line to the le uh, to the right, but here's the key. I spread my defensive linebackers, and what you see now is we got both 
Linebackers now stacked on the outside edge of the tackles. No show blitz needed. Uh, no manual move needed at all. So now when we stack that, back, uh, that safety off the hip, now the B-gap comes in pretty clean. And it's basically just the same exact concept that we were running two seconds ago, but now we have the linebackers shifted in a different way. Now, this is going to negate the 4-4 look, but it makes a 3-3-5 bear look essentially is what we get. So now we stack that guy, we slide protect to the left, and you see it picks it up. So, how do we make this blitz? Yes, the B-gap is nice because it creates quick pressure, but how do we make it so that this blitz is a little bit more, uh, you know, we want the blitz to come off the edge, essentially. So, we could always just re-blitz more, and that way he doesn't get, that way the linebacker gets picked up before Moore does. And, uh, you know, that's probably my most common, uh, you know, my most common setup. But one of the things you can also do is you can re-blitz more and you can re-blitz your left of screen linebacker by globally blitzing him. So when I say globally blitz, I mean hit R1 and flick your right stick to the left. And now you're going to see the pressure comes through the B-gap with the safety. Now placement is key here. You saw you don't want to stack him. When you do this tactic, you want your safety to be uh, a little bit off so they don't run into each other and you see there you get the pressure the quick pressure off the edge now that's what we're looking for because if you're gonna look here when we um, slap protect our offensive line now what's gonna happen what should happen is the uh, the linebacker should still shoot free and you see he does shoot free that time the center actually slid over right bef um, as we were finishing the play to to defend it but normally uh, my quick adjustment for that is to contain the defensive tackle on the right side of the screen as well as contain the defensive end on the right side of the screen and now you're gonna see now that center's not gonna slide over and now we're gonna get the pressure very clean it's pretty quick pressure too. Uh, you see the the post route doesn't even get a chance to break. So here's your setup for left side pressure. You're gonna base the line. You're gonna shift your line to the right. You're gonna spread your linebackers. You're gonna re globally re blitz your left of screen linebacker. You're going to stack the safety on the back, almost on the almost like right here. Uh, on the back, like butt pad of that linebacker, and reblitz him. Then you're going to contain both defensive linemen that you have shifted to the right side of the field. And so this is the pre-snap look. Of course, you can adjust your coverage. Uh, I like to do two purples on the outside because with flow coverage and the pre-snap look, not very many people throw streaks against this. And so you're going to see pressure comes in off the left side. Now, the key to defense, guys, is, ha and let me show you real quick what happens if you uh, do not re your safety when you slide him in. Um, same setup. And we're going to slide protect to the left now. And you see what happens? The safety actually comes in, and that's why you have to re him. Because you want your linebacker to shoot free, because your linebacker is going to be able to come in against slide protection. That's the key. Now, say you want to send pressure uh, from the same look, but you want to send it off the right side, but you want to use the same coverage behind it. Okay, well, you're going to do the same setup. The only thing you're going to do now differently is you're going to re-blitz your right of screen outside linebacker. What I like to do out of this is I like to purple zone my uh, that guy that was in the deep blue zone before. And then I like to click on to my uh, safety that's blitzing here, and I like to put him in a deep blue zone and shade my coverage to the right. So now you see we basically have the same pre-snap look, the same coverage, we just basically almost flipped the play, but it looks like we can be running it from either side. Now in order for this blitz to work, uh, you want to go ahead and, and uh, crash your line to the right. Uh, and the reason for that is so we get this guy couch here on a blitz angle to that side. And then also you want to re-blitz that defensive end and contain the two guys on the left. And what should happen is we should get right edge. And there you see right edge pressure coming pretty clean. But the one thing that I will say with this pressure, 
is it'll show you against slide protection. And guys, trust me, you can set this up a lot faster. I'm just going through it fairly slow. See, I'm already set up. Whoops, forgot to put that guy in a purple zone. You see, here's the same play. We just slid the protection to the right. And you're going to see we still come in clean. Now, the beauty of, uh, uh, of NCAA 14 is if your opponent blocks a running back, and I'm pretty sure, I'm almost 100%, it may just work from certain formations, but I'm almost 100% sure this still works. They may have patched it, though. I don't know if they did. Same thing, and they're going to slide protect to the right, and they're blocking a running back now. And now you see the running back's going to go over, right? But, what if we brought left side pressure and right side pressure? So same same thing. Baseline. Shift your line to the right. Now in this scenario, you're going to crash your defensive line to the right. Now this is the key adjustment you guys are going to want to pay attention. You see we're going to send the same pressure from the left that we were sending earlier. So we're going to re-blitz both outside linebackers now because we're going to send two guys free. This is the key. You want to go ahead and contain the defensive tackle on the left side of the screen. Which is, oh, he's actually a defensive end, but he looks like he's over the guard. So, uh, anyways, left of screen defensive end, but I don't want you guys get to, to get confused with that in the linebacker. So make sure it's this guy on the inside, and then you're going to re-blitz your defensive end on the right side of the screen. And now all we basically give up now is we're going to shoot two guys free, but the flats on both sides of the field are going to be open. So what I like to do out of this is you know the pressure is going to come in before they can get the ball down the field deep. So I'll go ahead and hook zone my corner on both sides of the field here so that they'll play the underneath stuff a little better, come up and make a tackle a little sooner. So now you're going to see we get two guys free. And why would you want to send two guys free? Well, like I said before, what if they block their running back and they slide protect to the opposite side? Well... With this setup, same thing. Move him down, move him over. Now, even if they have this protection, you see we're still going to come off the right edge untouched. Now you say, what if they block the running back and slide protect to the left side? Okay, well let's look. Same pre-snap look. There we go. Here is the play art. You're going to see we still come in off the right edge. Now, is there a way to guarantee that you come off the left edge instead of the right edge? Yes, there is. The only way you know for sure you're going to come off of whatever edge is the side the running back is on. So if you're sending a two-way pressure, if the running back is on the left side, the pressure will come off the right side. If the running back's on the right side, the pressure will come off the left side. Even it, slide protection, it, it doesn't matter. I set up all my blitzes so that they beat the slide protection uh, feature in the game. So, uh, you know, some guys you'll see posts like A-gap blitzes sent in six or DT nanos or whatever uh, contain glitches. Uh, slide protection stops all that. What I give you guys for free, uh, slide protection does not does not stop uh, because, you're com yes, you are committing more people sometimes, but you're getting more consistent pressure. Pressure you can rely on in clutch situations. So anyway, here we go again. We're going to base a line. We're going to press. Or we're not going to press. We're going to uh, shift our defensive line to the right side of the screen. We're going to crash our defensive line to the right. We're going to re-blitz both outside linebackers after we spread our uh, outside linebackers. Re-blitz that defensive end. Click on to more here. Re-blitz him. And then if you have time... Be sure to try to put both of these outside corners in hook zones. And now say I say I block my tight end instead of my running back and I slide my line to the left. And see, I get left side pressure because the right side was blocking the right tight end. Now, if your opponent really wanted to, 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 beat, to beat you on this, here's what he's going to have to do to pick this up. He's going to have to block his tight end and he's going to have to block his running back. 
Here we go. Same setup. There it is. And you see, we get a one-on-one -on -one with that linebacker and the running back. And we get a quick block shed, but we don't get a free runner. However, real quick, let me just touch on this. So, yes, and th you know that's going to pick up the pressure. Number one, not a lot of people will do that. Number two, they have three guys in a round against five defensive uh, defensive backers, uh, defensive uh, coverage players. So, I like my chances to, to jump a route. And again, uh, let's just run this play. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, throw, and you got him. So, you know, even if this gets picked up, it's usually going to come in in about three seconds. Now, the beauty of this play is you're basically, you could do this from any play in this formation. So, if we wanted to do it from, say, uh, a two-man under, well, we're going to base a line. We're going to crash our defensive line to the right. We're going to shift our defensive line to the right. We're going to spread our defensive linebackers. We're going to re-blitz our right-of-screen linebackers and send it from the right. We're going to re-blitz that defensive end. We're going to contain the linebacker on the left side of the screen here, Sap. And uh, our defensive end on the left side of the screen, Walls. And now you're going to see... A different coverage, but the same pressure in the same look. And that is the key to great defenses, having the ability to change your coverage in behind your blitz. Stay tuned, guys, for some more in-depth breakdowns on the 335 stack formation. You guys are not going to want to miss this guide. This is uh, one of the better guides I've done. Um... And I hope you guys make sure to subscribe for more free, NFL, uh, free NCAA tips, tricks, and strategies. Um, that time I ran my play wrong. Let me show you again here. So if I wanted to say run the, the right side setup, what you have to do is... Got to uh, make sure he's stacked on a hip. And make sure you contain walls instead of uh, re-blitzing them. And now you see, now you get the free rusher. So, very simple concepts, guys. Pretty easy stuff here. But uh, if ran correctly, it's it's one of the best defenses in the game. Because, again, uh, the 335 stack is by far one of the best, and I mean the best, run defenses in the game. Because you have gap integrity. When you look at this look... You know, what you create here is you have this gap. Yeah. If they run left, these two guys are going to be filling the lanes. If they run right, these two guys are going to be filling the lanes. And these uh, safeties here are going to come clean. If they run down the middle, your middle linebacker is going to suck the blockers. And your safety is going to come up and make a tackle for maybe three yards. And the beauty of this formation is sometimes, you know, this thing just stuffs the run cold. I'm telling you guys right now. So... And then, uh, you know, you can always um, slide players in, stack them off the edge. Make sure the only time, uh, the way the game works, guys, if you want to stack a player, you could stack them as long as they're outside the tackle. Once they get inside the tackle, then it automatically is going to move them. And you can stack them as close to the line of scrimmage as you want. Uh, uh, the maximum, or the, the closest you can get, though, is four yards. At three yards, it moves them back. So just some quick notes about stacking guys because I do from time to time you know move my uh, move it and basically make it like this kind of a look because it's a deceptive look they think pressures coming and something you could do from this uh, real quick before we get out of here is uh, my maximum coverage defense because once again you want to have uh, you know a maximum coverage defense you can run I'll run my contain concept off the right side of the screen here so I'm going to contain the defensive end. I'm going to contain that safety who is actually in a deep blue zone. I'm going to put Couch here in the deep blue zone. I'm going to shade my coverage to the right so that he's going to play that inside streak. And then what I like to do on the back side is I like to quarterback spy my defensive tackle. And I like to quarterback contain um, my, um, well, excuse me. I like to quarterback spy my left of screen defensive end and quarterback contain my left of screen outside linebacker. 
So now what you're going to see is it's passive pressure, but it's really, you know, an effective. Actually, didn't come in that time, but you see it's a, it's a maximum coverage defense. And the goal is to generate the pressure. We didn't actually get it that time. I don't know why. We may have to do it a little, um, a little differently. Let's see. Let's try doing it with the linebacker instead of the safety. So uh, linebacker and safety here. And we're mainly going to do this. Maybe, maybe do something like this. So that kind of a pre-step look. Now we're in a cover three. And now uh, we didn't come in there either. I'm going to have to take a look at that. But usually the contain blitz does come in. And it's just a matter of figuring out figuring out the figure the ins and outs of it out. Um, you know, sometimes it's just very something, very, something very simple. One thing I've also been doing is maybe doing like this kind of a deal. Where you contain the corner and the, the dude on the on the, uh, the the slot safety. And then purple the DN so they get out there for the streaks. And then um, deep blue this dude, Randolph. You may move him over a little bit, deep blue him. And you're just going to shade your coverage out. And you're going to stack him. Like I said, I like to stack about four yards off the tackle. And then what we could do off this is maybe uh, spy, contain, yellow. And you know the beauty of this is you're creating your you know your your coverage defenses and you're being able to change your shells from the same pre-snap look. For some reason the contain blitz isn't coming in. I'm gonna have to take a look at the can. Uh, I look at that because usually it comes in from every formation in the game. Uh, it may have something to do with the way this formation is uh, is aligned. I'm not quite sure. I have to take a look. I'm gonna try it one more time for you though. Oh, it started to come in. Hmm. I'll take a look at it for you guys. I'll make sure to have it in the next video for you. Uh, a quick way to run the contain blitz. Thanks for watching today, guys. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel for more tips, strategy, and tactics. Also, guys, if you have any questions or any suggestions for me, please leave them in the, below in the comment section. I read every single comment, and I will try to reply to it as soon as possible. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.